Today we're going to wrap up this battery build and give you guys some of my thoughts and answer some of your questions from after a month of using my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack. What's going on everybody? My name is Dan. Welcome to Freely Roaming. So it's been a little over a month now since I finished building my battery pack and a lot of you guys have shown a lot of interest in my build and in fact the main video has gotten over 110,000 views which is pretty incredible for how small this channel is. As a matter of fact since I started uploading this video series I've gained over 5,000 subscribers thanks to you guys. I'm glad so many of you guys found this series to be helpful. I've done my best to try to answer everybody's questions in the comments as much as I can. And there's a couple of questions that comes up over and over again, so I thought I included in this sort of summary video for the entire build. I wanted to wait at least a month after I start using my DIY battery pack to make this video so I can have some sort of real world scenarios and real world numbers to share with you guys on how the battery pack is actually working. But before we get into that, I just wanted to sincerely thank you guys for your support, all your views, all your subscriptions, all your comments, they've been really, really, really helpful, not just to support the channel, but also to help me figure out what types of questions you guys have, what kinds of projects you guys are building, and also what types of content I should create for you guys going forward. And for all of you guys that have subscribed, I sincerely thank you for that. And if you wanna support this channel even more, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash freely roaming. And if you're interested in supporting, you can click on the link down in the description to find out more. So before I get into a lot of the specifics of how the battery's been working over the last month, I want to give some of your new subscribers an idea about what to expect from this channel. This channel started about a year ago. It is actually my second channel. My primary channel is exclusively for my travel vlogs. It is at Molly Mish Travels the World. We are a family of five who have been traveling around the world for the last 13 years. We first started traveling around North America, from the United States to Canada to Mexico, and three years ago we shipped our vehicle across from the United States to Europe, and since then we've been traveling all across Europe. A little bit of Asia and Turkey, and a little bit of Africa and Morocco. So my expertise is in mobile living, and obviously, having been living in a camper for the last 12 plus years, I have a lot of experience with solar, with off-grid systems, and also just exactly how to conserve my power, my water, my resources as I live on the road. And if you click around at some of the other content on this channel, you'll see that my content doesn't just revolve around lithium batteries. It goes everything from sustainable living to mobile living, to how to make a living while traveling, as well as building out your adventure mobile. And I hope for a lot of you, this is all content that you're interested in. And if you want me to cover any specific topics in the upcoming videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can. You can also go check out the companion blog at freelyroaming.com where you can find out a lot of the write-ups. A lot of the content over there are sort of mirrors of the videos that we've uploaded, but there's also a lot of very specific stuff that's more suitable for blog format. For example, we have a lot of content there on exactly how to build out your electrical system, aside just from having a solar system and a battery. It goes into a lot of detail when it comes to what types of DC and AC system that you should have, how you should size your solar system and how you should size your battery bank. And also there's a great blog post that talks specifically about how to build five different levels of electrical systems in your DIY camper. So my expertise is specific in off-grid living and mobile living. Some of you guys have asked me about grid tie systems, which is something that I don't have a lot of experience with. I will get in to more grid tie systems in the future once I start dabbling in that a little bit more. For the most part, a lot of the hardware is the same with an off-grid system compared to a grid tie system. But the difference is there's a lot of safety protocols that you have to abide by. So without having a lot of first-hand experience, I hesitate to give you guys advice on grid tie systems. But there are a lot of great YouTubers creating content about grid tie systems that you guys can easily search for and find stuff about that. One of the main questions people have asked over and over again about this build is exactly how much did it cost to build this? And I mentioned it in one of the videos before, just exactly how much each component can cost, but I'm gonna break this down for you guys exactly how much it costs me versus exactly how much it might cost you if you're buying from the United States, for example. 
And because I'm currently traveling in Europe, my costs are going to be totally different than what it might cost you when you're buying it from another country. And that's because there's different costs when it comes to value added taxes in Europe, uh, import tariffs, as well as shipping costs. I'm on an island in the country of Croatia, which is pretty difficult for me to get products here. And in fact, I have a couple things that are being shipped here right now and we just had to call UPS or at least the UPS subcontractor to see exactly where the package is. And just a simple thing like that can drag out to days if not weeks worth of hassle. And for you guys that are in a very convenient place like the United States, especially if you live in a big city, this is not something you have to worry about. Where we used to live in Southern California, you can order something and a vast majority of Amazon products will even arrive on the same day, which is something that we really took for granted while we were there. But now things are harder for us to get and things are more expensive for us to get. We can really appreciate how much convenience that brought us. Okay, so I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the exact components and the exact costs that I had to pay. So I have a list of components here. Some of these are required and some of these are optional to build your own DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack like the one I've built in this series. So the required items are the cell, the BMS, and just for my build purpose, I'm also saying that a, a secondary active balancer is also required for my purpose. A roll of Kapton tape, that is something that I feel like is required if you want to secure this battery pack properly. You need the enclosure and you need cables and lugs for assembling your battery pack. The cells that I paid for were $621.90. And that is from one specific AliExpress seller to be shipped directly to this island village in Croatia. Right now, there are other sellers selling grade A batteries that are exactly like mine. And in fact, I'll put a link in the description below. There is a seller selling a four pack of 280 amp hour 3.2 volt batteries, which is exactly what I got, at 20% off their normal price, which is $418.32 shipped anywhere in the US. And that is an amazing deal. That is more than $200 less than what I paid. So keep in mind that a lot of these inventories can change over time. One of the questions that you guys ask is, hey, you know, what's the link for the actual product that you bought? Well, the link to what I bought is not necessarily the best place for you to buy it, but I understand with AliExpress, you wanna buy from a reputable seller because there are a lot of sellers out there who either don't ship properly or sell grade B batteries and try to pass them off as grade A. So I understand that a lot of you guys wanna to, want to buy the exact item from the exact same vendor. But keep in mind that the price, there is no guarantee in what price you're gonna pay because as you can see, the popularity of these videos show that there is a huge demand for these cells right now. So the price can obviously fluctuate. But keep an eye out. I'll put the link to this really good deal down in the description below. For $418.32, you can get four 280 amp hour 3.2 volt cells shipped to you in the US. And I think that's a really great deal. And that's currently 20% off right now. So the normal price is going to be higher. I'm not sure how long this sale is going to be, but if you're watching this video as it's uploaded, it still should be that price. So for the BMS, I paid $75 for the Dali 4S lithium iron phosphate 120 amp common port BMS. There's lots of BMSs out there. There are better BMSs for you guys to get. BMSs that are programmable, BMSs that have built-in Bluetooth. But the one I chose just happens to be a relatively inexpensive, but good quality. I wanted to make sure that the BMS that I got was reliable. So I chose a brand that are known to be reliable and relatively inexpensive. And my experience has been good with this BMS. If you guys choose to have a different BMS with different features, keep in mind that you have to make sure that you're choosing a brand that is reliable because a BMS could kill your battery if it malfunctions. The same BMS that I bought can be had in the US for about $56. So there's a difference of about $20 because I'm buying this here in Croatia. And then next is the active cell balancer. Active cell balancer is another question that people have asked me a lot about. Why do you need an active cell balancer? Well, the truth is you don't. 
My Dali BMS has a balancing feature built in, but the difference between the built-in balancing feature versus this active balancer is that the Dali BMS has passive balancing. Essentially what it does is that it uses MOSFETs to drain the battery, drain the individual cells when they're of too high a voltage. And it does that by using resistive heating. It directs voltage through MOSFETs within the BMS to heat up the MOSFETs to drain the battery voltage down so that it matches the other cells. That's totally fine. That's a great and reliable way of balancing cells. It's just that with active balancing, what an active balancer will actually do is it would reroute voltage from one cell to another, from a high cell to a low cell until they equalize. And it will continue to do that time and time and time again to get your batteries to balance rather than just using resistive heating to drain your voltage down to the same level. You can use an active balancer and the built-in passive balancing in your BMS in conjunction. They're not gonna conflict. They're gonna work perfectly fine with each other. And as a matter of fact, in my build, I've been checking my battery's balance every day or every other day or so. And pretty much when the battery is not under load or is not being charged, it quickly balances itself out at six millivolts. That's the maximum delta between all four cells, which is really, really, really closely balanced. I'm really happy with how my active balancing and my BMS balancing has been working in conjunction with each other. A roll of Kapton tape. I paid $20.45 for a roll of Kapton tape. So obviously, depending on where you are and what brand and where you buy, what size tape you buy from, this is gonna cost anywhere between $10 to $20. Uh, just a quick link on Amazon US, I found that you can buy a very similar roll that I have for about $14.40. And then the next two things are just the enclosure, the cables, and the lugs. The enclosure, basically you can build your own, you can find one, but the way that I built my own, I just use regular hardware store stuff. Uh, pieces of wood with uh, metal L brackets and screws and glue. So that came out to about $25, and I think that's probably about the same for you guys, buying anywhere at a local hardware store or a local big box store like a Home Depot or Lowe's. And next is cables and lugs, depending on what you need. You don't really need a lot of cables and lugs, depending on what you do. I need to make some custom cables that goes from the BMS to the shunt, and then from the shunt to the uh, circuit breaker. So by adding a couple of extra lugs here and there. Uh, you may add a little bit extra cost to it. So that's going to be roughly about $20. So those are all the required items to build a fully functional and fully reliable battery pack like the one that I have. The total cost of these items that I just talked about, for me, it came out to $795.11. And that's for all the products to be shipped to or procure here directly in Croatia. And if you're in the United States, your price will be $567.28. And that is really, really cheap for a fully functioning 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So if you wanted to add a couple more optional items like I've done in my battery pack, it's gonna cost you a little bit more. Specifically, I added a Victron Smart Shunt directly into the battery so I can monitor what the battery is doing, both charging and discharging. My cost for Victron Smart Shunt here in Croatia was $179.57. A quick price check on Amazon.com in the US, you can get one for $133. So that's about $45 less that you will pay in the US versus me here in Europe. I also added a Victron Battery Sense, which is just a way for me to monitor the temperature of the, of the battery pack. And for me, I pay $60.33 here in Europe. On Amazon.com, price check came out to be $43. So again, this is gonna cost you less money in the US, about $17. And like me, if you wanted to add a capacity monitor, which is the little monitor that I use to see how my maximum delta is between my battery balancing, that cost me $12.01 on Amazon Germany to have it shipped here in Croatia. Amazon.com has one, the identical one that I have for $10.50, just a little bit less money. And to hook that up to your battery system, you're gonna need some battery balance connectors, which for me, it costs $7.12. And 
Amazon.com shows that there is one for $5.99. So just a little over a dollar less. Now, if you want to build something exactly like mine, adding all the totals up compared to before is without the optional items. Now with all the optional items that I've added, my cost came out to $1,054.14. By telling up the exact same items that you can buy there in the US, your cost will be $759.77. And of course, your price will vary depending on when you buy this and where you buy it from, but that's about the ballpark. On the high end, you'll pay a little over $1,000 to build a battery pack like this. And on the low end in the US, you can pay closer to $750. Either way, it's a really, really, really good price for a lithium iron phosphate battery of this capacity. Okay, so now let me talk to you guys about how the battery has been performing in the real world over the last month or so of me actually using it in my camper van. Since I installed this battery in my camper van, I have used exactly 15.7 kilowatt hours off of this battery pack. And the most I've ever drained percentage wise from this battery bank over this last month or so of usage was 30% of total capacity. Meaning my battery was at least 70% full the entire time. Usually it hovers around 75 to 85% at the end of the day. So today being the day after winter solstice, uh, we have we had a really, really short day yesterday, the shortest day of the year. So from here on out, as long as we don't get too many clouds, which is actually the forecast for us for the next week or so, we're gonna have a lot of clouds. Having this reserve capacity is really nice to have. I know that if I'm only draining about 20 to 25% of battery on a daily basis, even on days like this, I can easily last three, perhaps four days if I conserve with the battery capacity that I have. And like I mentioned earlier, the battery balancer is working great. I have not done an independent test to see how the battery balancer works with or without the active balancer. If I just use the DALI BMS built-in passive balancing, I suspect it will still work. I've not done the test where I remove the active balancer to see if it works better the same or if there's any noticeable difference at all between having one or the other. But the bottom line is, I'm happy the way it's currently set up. Some people have mentioned that having active balancing, having the capacity monitor, and also obviously having my Victron battery sense sensing the temperature, there's gonna be phantom draw from the battery bank. So if I was not charging the battery at all, and even if I wasn't using it, these small devices will create little phantom draws on the battery bank. Even though those draws are very small, over a period of a couple of months, it will draw the battery down to the point where it might deplete it. But it's not an issue for me because my battery is constantly being used and it's also hooked up to a 350 watt solar system. So even on days like this where there's hardly any sun, it is still getting more than enough battery to overcome that phantom depletion. So some of you have also asked, if I were to rebuild this battery pack again, what would I do differently? There's actually a few conversations that people have brought up, a few topics that people have brought up. One specifically about compressing the batteries together. And there's logic to some of these methods. Um, and there's rationale on whether to do it or whether not to do it on both sides. The main reason why somebody will want to compress the batteries is if the batteries is used for high current purposes. Since my battery never gets drawn down below 25, max 30% on a regular basis, my draws are really, really low. I'm drawing on the average between 0.1 to 0.2 C max on a daily basis, which is to say it is very, very, very lightly used. And people have asked about heat buildup. Should there be some kind of active cooling happening within the battery box? Well, as a matter of fact, right now, I'm more concerned with how cold the battery gets rather than how hot the battery gets. There is zero noticeable heat. And in fact, the temperature inside the battery box that I've been monitoring with my Victron battery sense is virtually identical to the ambient temperature of the van. So active cooling is not something that I'm concerned with, but I will look more into it when the weather starts to get a little warmer in this upcoming summer. And as to compressing the cells, the reason why you want to compress cells is to prevent delamination from happening internally for these cells. And what happens when you have high amperage draw 
on these battery cells is that they can expand and contract. From the repeated high current draw, you're gonna have extensive expansion and contraction of these cells. And that's where you're gonna have the potential of delamination within the cells that can cause degradation of the battery to hold your rate of capacity. So with my type of use, which is on the average between 0.1 and 0.2 C draw, that is not going to be an issue. Delamination is not something that I'm worried about, at least at the current rate that I'm using it. Now, there is a possibility that at some point I may upgrade my inverter from a 1000 watt inverter to a two to 3000 watt inverter. So then I can use an induction cooktop as a alternate way of cooking while I'm in the camper van. If that was the case, then I will be drawing a significant more amount of amperage from my batteries, which means that in a hot day with a high amp draw, I may get to the point where the expansion and contraction will be significant enough to, for me to consider compressing the cells together. Now, if that does happen, I will probably figure out some sort of reconfiguration in the batteries to compress the cells together using threaded rods, washers, and nuts to make sure the cells do not expand and delaminate in heavy, heavy use. That is not something I'm necessarily going to do yet, but if I do, I will let you guys know exactly how I do it. And I'll show you guys in another video how to reconfigure your batteries if you happen to build one like mine. Another change that's more likely for me to do is actually figure out how to heat the batteries if I'm ever in a sub-freezing temperature. I do have the Victron battery sense and also the Victron MPPT charge controllers that can cut off charge when it senses that the temperature drops below a certain degree. That's just part of the picture. That just prevents the battery from being damaged by being charged when it's below freezing. What you actually want to do is find some active way to be able to heat the batteries back up to a safe temperature so you can continue using it. It is really important for me to have that ability because I live in my camper van full time and because you live in your camper van, having your battery not work because it's too cold outside is just, it's just really not a convenient way to go. So in one of the upcoming videos, I will show you guys exactly how I go about installing DC silicone heating pads. I will show you exactly how that can be configured with a temperature sensing switch that will automatically switch on power to the silicone heating pad to heat the entire battery to warm it up to a safe degree so that it can be charged and discharged. And that's pretty much it. Overall, I'm really happy with how the battery has been performing. And of course, because of the current travel restrictions, we're not able to travel around a whole lot. So that's why I took the opportunity to do this battery upgrade while we're here on this island. We did have to take the van out for a drive. So we drove to one of the bigger cities in the area and came back and did about a two day trip back and forth. And the battery did great. It handled the vibrations, it handled the traveling, it handled the DC to DC charger from the alternator without any problems at all. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. I will keep you guys updated when we start to travel a bit more on how the battery is working. And there's a good chance that before all that happens, I will do some of these upgrades that I talked about in this video to my battery. So once again, I wanna thank you guys for supporting my channel. I'm really overwhelmed with all the people that have subscribed. And if you wanna find out more about us, you can go to our Molly Mish channel at youtube.com slash Molly Mish. If you want to support us, once again, on Patreon, our Patreon is patreon.com slash freelyroaming. You can check out our blog at freelyroaming.com. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them below. Some of the other questions that you guys have asked, I will make specific videos to answer each and every single one of them. Thank you guys again for all your support. I'm really glad you guys are here. I hope you guys have a happy holidays and a great New Year's. Thanks as always. I'll see you guys in the next video.